Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we'll bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today we're on a static preview event of the Xpon Mona MO3. Mona is a new series under the Xpon brand. About the backstory of this car, I've already previewed this in the Ion Y review. DD has been secretly developing its own car, fully in-house, with hundreds of millions of dollars of investment pumped into it. But the IPO failure put a stop to that. DD decided to sell everything to Xpon. This is supposed to be the first car around, we think, around 150,000 RMB, that's around 20.5, 20 and a half thousand dollars. Around that price point, this is the first car around that price point that's gonna have serious assisted driving capabilities. We are expecting this car to have all the same urban assisted driving capabilities as the Xpon main brand. From the side profile, you can clearly see this is a very aero-driven design. They're quoting drag coefficient of just 0.194. That's the lowest among any production car worldwide. And it's achieving that very low drag coefficient while not being ugly. I mean, this is not a Mercedes EQS. It doesn't look any way as radical as a Mercedes EQS. It looks kind of normal. It's pulling out all the stops to achieve that kind of drag coefficient, including this kind of unusual small fin on the D-pillar. I suspect this is to create separation, both to separate the airflow coming off the D-pillar and all of the airflow that's coming around the window to push them further away from the body. So when they start rotating into the opposite direction, trying to pull the car back, creating drag, it's that much further away from the body. So low drag coefficient, aero driven design, single motor, front wheel drive. This is building up. We don't know at this moment yet, but this is supposed to be stand toe to toe with the Model 3 on outright energy efficiency. All the windows are completely blacked out. We cannot show you any interior footage. So you're just gonna have to take my words for it. I have sat in the car, both in the front and in the back. At the front, it's a two spoke steering wheel. It doesn't have an instrument display and it doesn't have an HUD, so very budget focused. The horizontal screen is quite big, so in that front it's very similar to the Model 3. The space in the back is standard for a car of this size. This is not a big car by any means. This is virtually the same size as the Tesla Model 3. And if you're comparing to the Model 3, yeah, it's got more space, but so does just about every other electric saloon currently on the market today. It's not gonna blow you away in terms of outright space, but considering its size, it's reasonable. The boot of this car is a major highlight. It doesn't look like this car has a lot of rear overhang, but it manages to squeeze a 600 liter plus boot. And plus you have this huge hatchback. We cannot show you how big this boot actually is because the interior spec is not finalized, but it's huge. I mean, you can spot this if you watch a lot of Mona MO3 reviews. Just about everyone will mention how big this boot is. So on paper, it's 600 liter plus, and it does look like a very significant boot, unusual for a car of this size. If you're wondering where is the catch for this car, if this car can drive itself at 150,000 RMB, which is unheard of, then what are the areas it's compromised? Well, one of them is on the rear suspension. This is on torsion beam rear suspension. It doesn't have fully independent rear suspension. It wouldn't be so much of a problem even two or three years ago, but right now on the market today, you have full electric saloons that are significantly cheaper than this car and they have fully independent rear suspension. So my take on this, if you're being glass half full is, if this car can drive itself on urban streets, then all of the subjective handling, all of the ride and comfort become that much less important. So yes, while I would like to see this car to have fully independent rear suspension, if this car can free me from driving fatigue in heavy traffic jam, then I believe it's a reasonable trade-off. An unusual feature for a car of this price point is this car has active aero shutters for its cooling intake. The second catch is behind this, somewhere in the front bonnet, is this car doesn't have a heat pump. Yeah, for a car of 150,000 RMB, if it doesn't have a heat pump, the best case scenario is like the ION Y. 
It's going to be very popular in the mid to southern region of China, but in the northern part, if you want to be successful, you really need to have a heat pump. That's another area where you can clearly see this car is originally designed to be a commercial taxi. Not having a heat pump is less important for a commercial taxi because the drivers will charge this car up. They will manage the range, but for a private vehicle, especially if this car wants to be successful in the northern part of China, I really do think it should have a heat pump. So that's a very early peak on a Mona MO3. I think I've summarized this car's strengths and weaknesses based on the current information so far quite well. It's got the best assisted driving hardware and the digital cockpit that's really unheard of at its price point, but it also has some trade-off mechanically. I'm hearing this car's media test drive to be around mid-July, early August time, so I won't jump to the conclusion to say that deficiencies this car may have, mechanically speaking, outweighs its strength in assisted driving. The benefit of a fully independent rear suspension and heat pump are not as apparent as a car that can drive itself at 150,000 renminbi. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.